What's up YouTube, I'm Mr. No Name, or Max as people know me in the real world, and today I am bringing you guys a competitive S&D game on Octane. It is from an MLG variant uh, search and destroy only match, and this was actually a 16 minute gameplay before I edited it down some. Um, I wound up just cutting out the round, uh, the few rounds in a row that were slow or I died or whatever. You know, I would just leave them in, you know, I feel like it's important for you guys to see my deaths as well, to see what I did wrong. Um, you'll still see a couple, but this is an extremely good gameplay. That's why I'm still using it, but I needed to cut it down some because I cannot talk for 16 minutes straight. I'm sorry. I just can't do that. So I apologize for that. So the main topic for today is going to be several more uh, competitive tips and tricks. And today it's going to be focused around the S and D game mode. So the first thing is limiting how much you sprint. And this is something that is extremely important in search and destroy and you know what I wasn't even realizing how much I was sprinting until this match um, Alex or Plizix as his gamer tag is he pointed out to us that you know what we sprint too much we're sprinting around corners and we're just not ready and that's when we're dying most of the time unless they're getting us from behind which is a different issue entirely but so limit how much you sprint you know when you're facing off against opponents you don't want to be sprinting even if you have that ready up perk you know it's just better if you already have your sights up and if you watch some of the pro gameplays from the tournament this last weekend you'll notice that a lot of them you know th they're smart about when they're sprinting so that's just something to keep in mind next thing is patience with gunfights and this is something that you will actually see in this game mode i will have somebody in my sights with the thermal however i can only see like the bottom of their legs and so i wait a good like 15 seconds for them to or at least it felt like 15 seconds at least i don't know it might have been more like five but i waited for him to move up some into my line of sights so that i could get them and of course you know call him out if you see him but you need to be patient with your gunfights don't challenge things that you're not going to be able to kill if somebody's just about to go around a corner don't challenge it if you can just see their legs don't go for it because you know legs and arms that's reduced damage you need to be hitting that upper body to to uh, get the kill quickly next thing is changing your strategy after each kill and this is something that is kind of hard for a lot of people you know I struggle with it too you know when you get a kill in s and people are going to react to where you got that kill people might start moving back to try and find you they might chase you and whatnot so the typical response for most people as far as I've seen is either they continue moving forward in the same direction where they just got that kill how they would originally have gone or they turn around and go the exact opposite direction and both of these are okay depending on the situation you know they'll work out sometimes but that's what people are expecting so a couple of alternatives is you could um, actually stay there like if you were on a head glitch when you got that kill like if you um, there's several times where I come up on a Humvee and get somebody off of a head glitch. You know, one of the things I could have done is I could have stayed there looking to see if anybody checked to see if I was still pushing forward. Um, of course, you got to worry then about them wrapping around behind you, but, you know, that's one thing you can do. Or you could take a slightly different route to the same location. So, um, you know, in Octane on that back alley portion where there's um, the Humvees and everything, you know, you can go in bottom hotel if you get a kill on somebody head glitching all the way in the back, and then you, you're technically going to the same area, just a slightly different route. So, you know, th th that's just something to think about. Make sure you're not necessarily always doing the same thing and just continuing forward or always retreating. You know, you, you, you got to react to every situation, and you've got to try and throw your opponents off. The next thing is using the thermal hybrid site correctly, and... This is something I am still experimenting with. It is kind of difficult to use. I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I was trying to use it with muzzle brake and the thermal hybrid on the Remington and it, and the SC2010. And oh my gosh, I could I couldn't handle the recoil. Um, even with foregrip, this thing, you know, it still kicks quite a bit. You got to have control. And when I say using it correctly, that's one of the things I mean. You know, you got to be able to control the recoil properly. But another thing is that you need to be able to um, switch the site at the appropriate time. You know, I mean, when you're in a long range engagement, you know, you can use that thermal. But if you're closer, you need to switch it over to the hybrid part of it. And that's something in one of the rounds that I cut out that I messed up on. Um, you know, I was in a 
close range engagement with that thermal and it's just way too hard to handle it's really really weird to use so you know you just got to get used to it um, next thing would be the importance of getting hyped and this is you know huge in any game type in competitive but I feel that it's the most important in s &D. You have to be able to get hyped. And this is something that our team struggles with a little bit. Uh, mostly because none of us are really the hype player. Um, you know, some of us do it sometimes. Uh, I think right now Alex, or Plizix as his gamertag is, he's usually the best at getting us hyped. Um, he usually takes that role since he's kind of the captain. So that's what he normally would do. But, you know, it, it's, it's really important when you are hyped, you feel like you can do anything, you feel like you're unstoppable. And for me, I feel like my reaction times improve, I feel like my decision making improves. Um, so, you know, getting hyped is extremely important, you gotta be able to do that in Search and Destroy. The next thing is um, using distractions in Search and Destroy. This is something that a lot of competitive teams do do, but there's several different types maybe that not everyone is necessarily aware of so you know the most basic thing would be to throw a stun or smoke in a misleading direction you know this is something that a lot of teams do already uh, so I won't really go into that but another thing you can do is you can actually send somebody or two somebody's to the other bomb like let's say you're on offense and you want to push B well you could do a two-man rush over at A and have two people hanging back by B not seen and these two people rush in and make some noise or whatever and then everybody's going to be drawn back over to A and then these two people can get the bomb down on B and then you've got them kind of between a rock and a hard place you if you, hopefully if you're still alive you know you can you have them kind of in the middle of you and you can pick them off from either side that's so that's another type of distraction you can do another thing is to simply you know waste time you know just make them try and chase down kills and just lose them and little mazes or whatever you know like in the hotel there you know you can kinda duck and weave a little bit kinda move around some and hopefully lose them um, so yeah that's that's you know the distractions next thing is using four man pushes and this is right about here is um, when I was talking about that patience where I'm looking at the guys feet but anyway next thing is four man pushes and this is something that should not be underestimated um, you know a lot of people are, don't do this you know they'll just always do the same thing they'll be like okay 2b 2a on defense um, well one thing that you should use to your advantage is at some point during that s and match you should try four-man push like literally this is this is what we do sometimes we will just all of a sudden out of nowhere after we've been playing super passive just do a four-man push on defense down one of the bomb sites and hopefully that's not the bomb site they're going to um, and the reason I say this is because then we have a four-man push they don't know where we are and we are all coming up on this long flank on them and if you do it uh, properly you can just completely catch teams off guard we usually do not lose a round when we do a four-man push um, so I mean that's something you guys can try next thing is varying your play style mid game and this goes along with the last thing I said you know if you've been playing passive so far you need to maybe play more aggressive or if you've been playing aggressive you know play more passive and it's just trying to throw your opponent off because they're going to start expecting you to do certain things as the game progresses so you need to make it where they can't predict what you're going to do that is like the most important thing you can do next thing is the importance of the first blood and along with this goes the importance of having a sniper so if you guys watched MLG Columbus, you guys would have seen, um, you know, Complexity. Their sniper, who, whoever that was, I can't remember if that was Crim6 or Karma, I'm sorry, I, I really can't remember. I'm so confused at this point as to which players, which I've just been watching what they've been doing. But whoever was sniping for them was absolutely amazing. You know, they didn't miss a shot, really. And they would always get that first blood, and that's what gave them that early advantage and allowed them to win so many rounds. So that is super important. That is something that our team struggles with a little bit as well. Um, you know, we're all kind of decent snipers, but none of us are like amazing at it. So we've got to practice that. So that's something you guys should try in Search and Destroy. Just have like a dedicated sniper that goes for that first blood every round. And you know, you don't always have to pull out the sniper, but on Octane especially, it's extremely important, you know, going to head glitch on the Humvee or top pawn or bottom pawn, you know, somewhere around there, depending on which side you're on. Then the next thing is talking about when you have only two players up on your team in S&D. 
So you basically have three options. You can either butt buddy, you can try and pinch, or you can use a bait tactic. And um, you know, a lot mo most people are probably going to just stick together. You know, butt buddy. That's what everybody calls it. And this works. You know, I mean, that way if one of you goes down, hopefully the other one can pick it up. But you got to be careful when you're doing this. Don't necessarily be looking the same way while you're that close, and don't be like lined up because. You know, that leads to collaterals and just a waste of a round. Um, I, I would typically go with a, a pinch or bait or, you know, kind of sticking together, but not too close. But um, with, with pinching, you got to have a lot of trust in your teammate. You know, I mean, if you're pinching from opposite sides of the map and one of you gets killed and now it's a 1v1, that was huge for the other player because now you're not going to be able to get to them in time. So you got to pinch properly. Normally when you pinch, you want to still be fairly close. You know, maybe just like a building apart or whatever and you're coming around on either side of it so that you can pick up the kill pretty much no matter what anyway. And then with baiting, this is another one where you have to have a lot of trust in your teammate. You know, so this is where somebody might go out, make a little bit of noise, accidentally shoot off or bump into something near a bomb site or whatever. And, um, you know, just kind of make a little bit of noise and then have somebody set up to where they can see that and pick up the kill once they are baited out properly. Alright, the end. Um, yeah, that's all we got time for today. So as you guys can see, we're coming to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please like, comment, and or subscribe. If you didn't, let me know what I can do better in the comment section below. Constructive criticism goes a long way, guys. Until next time, everybody, peace out.